<laughs> I hope you guys are there. I hope I'm broadcasting. Sorry if I can't tell who you are. I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. I hope you can see me. Um, I am a few blocks away from the 6th Avenue um, Baker Climbing Gym. I'm down here in the uh, Mariposa neighborhood of Denver. Um, and it's in the evening. Hope everybody's doing well. This is gonna be a relatively simple Hatha sequence. Hey, um, can you hear me okay? And we're gonna do like 30 to 40 minutes or so. So, this is my first time broadcasting live on Facebook. I'm really honored uh, to be able to teach um, from the comfort of my home um, during this time and to be able to reach some people and, and feel a little bit more connected. So I hope everybody's doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Um, again, if you're just joining, my name is Roger. Um, I teach at the Movement Baker Studio um, and I teach a Hatha class and that's what I'm gonna do this evening. It'll be about 30 or 40 minutes. So all you need is a mat. If you have a block, um, that's great too. Um, just to sit on, to get centered. We're gonna focus on um, our foundation today. And for me, the foundation is the, the big, anatomically speaking, the foundation for me is the big joints, like your hips, your shoulders. Um, but more subtly speaking, the foundation um, for me, as far as I have studied it in regards to yoga, is your dharma. Um, dharma is typically known as your moral direction or your moral compass. Um, but it also is the structure that kind of holds you up, the structure by which you make your decisions. Um, and if you've been feeling a little rocked lately, um, as I have, a little uh, indecisive at times and unclear, um, going back to your roots, both physically and otherwise, is a great way to kind of settle things down um, and taking small steps forward uh, a few at a time rather than taking giant leaps or trying to really um, flip what you know upside down um, at this time, I think is a, is a good practice. So that's Dharma. Dharma is gonna be the structure. So we're gonna start standing. And you can push your block off to the side um, just so you have a clear mat space. And um, this is kind of a standard sequence for my class. Um, so for those of you that have come to my class before, this will be kind of familiar. Uh, bending your knees, bring your hands down to your knees and just start to sway a little bit. Feet are, my feet are about mat width apart, but do what's comfortable. And for the poses today, I want you to really dig deep into your breath. So I may step off my mat occasionally just to check um, the comments to make sure that um, I'm still connected, but it looks like I'm still live. Keep swaying if you're on your mat. Hi, Erica. So take a few deep breaths. Roll even into your rib cage and the sides of your neck and shoulders. And take it slow. Spread the toes wide. Look down at your feet. Ground yourself in what you know to be solid. Um, lifting and spreading the toes, feeling the inner outer edges of the heels, feeling all 10 toes kind of grip the mat or grip the surface that you're standing on. Just swaying the hips, bending the knees, arcing the rib cage side to side to kind of get into the sides of your body is helpful. So the breath can open and so your hips can move a little more fluidly. And so your back is a little more comfortable because it's got these grounded, open, fluid moving hips. Step in now, feet about hip distance apart. Keep your feet really well grounded, bring your hands outside your knees, and squat low and push your knees out against your hands. So hands push in, knees push out, rock your hips a little bit side to side. Breathe kind of deep, sway a little bit. Pause the rock, come up to your toes and get nice and long from your hips to your ribs. Kind of telescope your rib cage away from your hips. Come back down, 
And we'll do this about three or four times, just like we did with the sway of the hips. Rock, sit low, push your knees out, resist with the hands. Come up to your toes and get long. You can roll your head and neck a little bit, roll the shoulders a little bit, just kind of loosen things up. Prime your legs to start to move and your hips and back to start to move you. Sway, twist the ankles, shins and knees. Come up to your toes, get nice and long. We'll do it one more time. Push a little harder, maybe a little lower down on the shins. Get a little more leverage to start to prime these outer hip muscles to hold you. And then lift your heels. Good. Step wide off the outer edges of your mat. Hinge as you bend your knees, so keep your belly long. Take your elbows in. Squat low. Your hips don't have to come too low. Squeeze your knees in around your elbows pushing out and go back to sway. Take a few deep breaths. Roll the hips side to side. Push the, knee, push the elbows out and squeeze the knees in. So now you're priming the inner thighs. Reach for your fingertips. Step your feet onto the mat and back a little bit and then arc. And I like to really push my rib cage out to the side. Just push, bend your knees, sit your hips back, stretch from the fingertips all the way down the side into the ribs and into the hips, and breathe deep. Do this a few times, even roll your head and neck around a little bit. Good, then plant your hands. Step your feet back far enough to feel grounded in a dog pose. And I like to bend my knees in my dog pose. I like to glue my hands to the ground like suction cups and really be powerful in my hands. And this is an old mat, so sometimes I slip, so I really have to grip. Bend my knees, and I like to sway here even to kind of shake out the back, shake out the hips, and roll the rib cage from the lower half. With the hands steady and the hips steady, bend your elbows and squeeze your upper back and then press your arms straight. Do it a few times. Squeeze the shoulder blades and push straight. Apologies if you can't hear me well, but take a look. I'm really trying to squeeze my shoulder blades. And then I stretch. That's just to warm up the upper back. Now I'm gonna turn my left hand out a little bit, step my feet in a little closer, and raise my right leg up. Come on to my right fingertips. If you can, come on to your right fingertips. Bend your right knee, lift your hip up high, and start to make some big circles with your right knee, just to shake out your hip. So go in either direction. Big open circles. And then step through. Right foot forward, left knee down. Rise up, bring your hands to your hips. Pause for a breath. Take a second to ground yourself. Square your hips, level them off. Release your neck, roll your shoulders around a little bit. Just kind of settle things. Adjust your wardrobe if you need to. And then lift your knee to hover and touch five times. This is to warm up the legs. So I'm not stretching yet. We'll get there. Five taps and then hold your knee about an inch off the ground. Take your hands up and interlace your fingers behind your head. Ground yourself between your head and hands. So lift your chin up, lift your rib cage and chest up. Take your left knee down and then arc up and over to the right. Stretch your left side. So push your head back. Lift the rib cage up. As the hips are grounded, you're lengthening and lifting the left side of your body. Open up, down into the hip and the low belly and breathe deep in there. Come back to center with your hands and then step forward and launch off your back foot into a figure four. And you can balance on the wall or move if you need to. Just a figure four squat. Push on the back of your heel, your left heel. Push with your left hand against your knee and lean to the right just a little bit. Good, and now we're gonna do another sequence of reps. So we're gonna go into a curtsy squat. So you're gonna whip your left leg around behind your right foot, point your toes so your toes land on the ground, and squat, take your back knee to the ground, and then lift back up slowly, cross your ankle, and sit again. That's one. You do it about three times. Reach over to the right with your left toes, take your knee down. You should feel that in your outer right hip when your leg is extended, and back into the figure four, and squat, take a breath. One more time, reach. Touch your toes, touch your knee softly. Come back up to center and we'll pause here for an extra beat and breathe. Good, and then you're gonna release your left foot. Shake out your right leg. Take a second, ground yourself from standing. And I like to put my hands on my hips so I know where they are. And I, when I'm grounding myself, 
and really feeling the earth, I'm using the energy that I feel in my contact with the ground to use that energy to feel like I can move. So if I'm locked knee, it's almost like I'm too rigid to be able to move. So I like to bounce a little bit. Hands on my hips helps me know that they're there and where they are and how they can move. From here, I'm gonna heel toe my feet a little bit wider, hinge from my hips, take my hands down on the ground and do a little more swaying and breathing and rolling my head and neck and shoulders. I'm gonna bend my knees to plant my hands and then step back into the same dog pose that we did where that sequence of movement started from. Sway the hips, plant your hands really steady on the ground. Make sure your index knuckles are glued to the ground. Be really strong through your hands. That's part of your foundation here. Okay, turn my right hand out a little bit, come up onto my left fingertips if I can, if it's comfortable. It allows me to stretch and be a little more sensitive of the weight on my left side. Left leg up, bend the knee, lift the hip, and make some big circles in either direction with your left knee. So keep your knee bent and move it around in some circles. Breathe. Step through softly, take your right knee down, pause for a breath, come up, hands to your hips. Roll your head and neck a little bit, roll the shoulders, feel where your hips are in place. Knowing where these parts of the foundation are, the big joints, the shoulder girdle, the pelvic girdle, will give you awareness to the spaces in between, your neck, your rib cage, your belly, your vital organs, below your pelvis, all these things that are grounded by these big bones, big compound joint structures. Lift your back knee to hover and tap five times, really softly tap it to the ground, just to warm up both legs, but really focusing on the left. And then hold it to hover about an inch off the ground, ground yourself into your feet, push from your pelvis into your feet, rise up with the hands, lift your chin, push your head back into your hands to open up the heart and then arc to the left. Be soft here with the stretch. So try not to yank yourself apart. Just be gentle, breathe deeply into the right side especially, even up here into your right armpit and around the collarbone and shoulder as you arc to the left. Come back to center softly, hinge a little bit and launch off your back foot. Try to fluidly come into a figure four squat and take an extra couple of breaths here. Lift your right knee, push on the back of your right heel with your left hand and lean to the left, just to get a little bit of that same opening on the, left, on the right hip, right side, right belly. Good, then we're gonna release, and remember curtsy squat, so right toes swing, right leg swings back behind the left, toes down, knee down. Then lift, swing, dance wildly, then cross again, and sit. Take your time, keep your breath steady, Reach, right toes to the left, squat. You should feel this in your left hip when you're at the lowest point. Then lift, cross ankle squat and sit. And breathe. One more time, reach. Tap, knee down softly. And the, the less you reach, the easier it is. And you can just go on toes, take the knee down. Cross ankle squat, and we'll add a couple of beats here. Lean maybe a little further left. Bend your left knee maybe a little deeper. And then rise and release and shift your left foot out. Plant your feet about hip distance apart. Interlace your fingers up and behind your head. Lift your chin and your chest up against the weight of the hands, but bend your knees and root your hips down. Rise up, breathe back into the ribs without pulling your belly too tight. So stretch up. You don't want to arc your low back too much in either direction. You don't, want to be, don't want your low back to be too flat nor too bowed, but rise up, get long, and then just sway gently left and right from this kind of lengthened position, using the weight of your hands to rise up with your head, using the bend in your knees to root down with your hips. Hinge as close to horizontal as comfortably possible and do the same thing, sway left and right. Just warming up the back connecting into the back of your neck and the hips and the legs, so bend the knees nice and deep and rock. A few times, push your head back into your hands to come up. Hands to your hips, balance on your right foot. 
Take your left foot up to your right inner thigh into tree pose. If you can get it there, great. If not, stay off your knee and just go to your shin. If you can, hold your ankle at first, your left ankle, and then bend your right knee. Stay there. Kind of work the strength of your right leg against your left foot. Bring your hands to your hips if you can. If you can't and your left foot is sliding, just hold on to your left ankle. You're fine here. But if you can, hold your hips and kind of level them off with how you bend your right knee. The more you can bend right knee, the better because you'll have more strength to push back into the foot. Take your fingers to your ribcage and breathe. Breathe a few times in your hands. Lift your chin. Relax your neck and jaw. Soften your face and gaze. If you can, on your next inhalation, take the arms up. Take hold of the right wrist and arc up and over to the left. Bend your right knee the further left you go. Pull with your left hand. Breathe. When you're ready, rise, release. Shake your right foot out. Take a second to reset your breath. To reset the connection between the breath and the body. So you're sensitive to how it opens progressively through the class. Okay, I'm gonna step back so it looks like my head and arms are getting cut off. Take your left foot up, I'm sorry, right foot up, other left foot. Right foot to the left inner thigh. So balance on the left, right foot to the thigh. And bend your left knee, hold your hips, and steady them. If you can. If you can't, your foot is either on the shin, still bend the left knee, or it's up on the thigh and you're holding your ankle to keep it steady there. If you can hold the hips, great. If not, don't worry about it. Or if you need a wall, find a wall to hold your balance. But working this foot against the thigh is really the value. You're really rounding into this left hip here because your foot is pushing on the thigh. It's pushing the thigh out. The thigh is resisting in. It's really giving this strengthening to this femur bone in the hip socket. So holding that, take your hands to your ribs if you can. Steady yourself with your breath. Lifting the chin as you inhale. Open your throat. Soften your gaze, and then on your next inhalation, take the hands up, hold. Try hinging forward and sliding your hand to your right knee. Bent right knee gives you this leverage to kind of keep the hips square, kind of keep your back in shape, even though you're in an asymmetrical pose. Hinge forward, so as opposed to opening the hip up high, keep your hip level with your right, keep your heel close to your hip, your left heel, and then just try and raise your left knee up as high as you can. Hinge forward, if possible, you can slide your hand down your leg. This is a little bit more advanced. You can touch the ground with your right fingertips or right palm. Ground yourself however you feel steady. I like the knee, hand on the knee, because it gives you leverage to really work your hips. Kick the left knee up high, slow motion rise, and you can slide your hand up. Take a breath. If you see any stars, make sure you're catching. That's the bonus. And then switch legs, balance on the left. Hook the right, level the hips, and hinge. Bend your left knee to give you some of the push against. So the left hand has something to really root. Root down through the left leg, keeping the hips level. With the right heel close, raise your right knee up high. And then if you can, reach, slide down to the ground. Breathe. Slide your hand back up to your knee and then slow motion make your way all the way back up to standing. Taking a couple breaths when you get there to reset yourself, reground yourself. Step your right foot back, take a wide stance, take horse stance. Turn your toes out evenly and bend both knees and squat in this kind of sumo squat or horse stance and then just sway again with your hands pressing your knees out and with your feet wide enough but also narrow enough apart that you really feel that like you can get deeper into the hips. So the lower the hips can go, in essence, the more, the more power you'll generate. I mean, you can go too low. So if I go too narrow and I get too low, I really lose the connection to my hips and I'm just holding on for dear life. Same thing if I go too wide. My hips get a little bit disconnected and I don't feel like I have the power. So I like to call it Goldilocks. Go somewhere in between so that your knees are pushed out to point at the center or the outer edges of your toes and you feel like you're working the, the inner thighs, but you're not, you have power there, you're strong. Then holding your knees steady, pausing the sway, lift your ribcage up, 
and grab your left elbow behind your head. Tricep, stretch. Lift your chin, push your head back into your form. Weave your fingers between your shoulder blades and stretch your upper back. And then pull up and over to the right. Arc to the right. Breathe. Sway the hips a little, lift the chin up, open the chest and arc to the right. Push your head back and your hands to come up. Release the legs as well. Take a moment to release your hand and breathe. Roll your head and neck. Shake things out. Sit back down. Again, push your knees wide. Sway the hips a little bit side to side. Take a few deep breaths. Keeping the hips steady. Start to lift your chin and chest, keeping the knees wide and the hips grounded right to the right tricep. Once you get as upright as you can, take the fingers between the, the shoulder blades and your upper back, lift your chin up, and then arc to the left. So tricep stretch, but really a side body stretch, and a hip engaging and opening. Chin up, arc to the left, and then push your head back into your hands. Release the legs and spin your heels out, so now your feet are parallel. Take a moment to breathe, soften the knees so they're not locked, but reground yourself. So make yourself heavy from your hips down into your feet so that you can be light. We call it, in the style of yoga that I used to teach, we call it root to rise. So ground yourself so you have freedom, essentially. Feet grounded, hands to your hips, shake them a little bit just to shake things out, and then release your fingers behind your back and do a little shoulder rolling a little bit. So elbows bent, shake out the shoulders slightly, lift your chin up, get any crunchiness out of the way. I find that the lower my chin is, the more likely my shoulders are to be vocal. They'll be crunchy, they'll be loud. When I balance my head over my shoulders, my shoulders move a little more fluidly because what's connected to them is in place. Pause the shoulder dance, then squeeze your arms and start to hinge. Just a gentle roll of the upper back to really work the shoulder blades. Try to keep your neck and head balanced between your shoulders and roll. Turn your thoracic rib cage, thoracic spine. Twist gently from your ribs and your thoracic vertebrae. Then release the hands and touch the ground. Bend your knees and shake your head. So touch the ground on fingertips so you're sensitive to how you're holding your weight. And when you bend your knees, you can kind of take weight out of your hands. So you should be light on your hands as you sway your hips gently side to side. And breathe. Next time you bend your right knee, keep it bent. Stretch your left leg straight. So right knee bent, left leg straight. Now I'm going to walk my hands to the left. So as I push my hips to the right and reach my right hand to the left, I get this big right side body stretch. And I'm even pushing with my left fingertips. Arc your right rib cage. Breathe into your right side. Take a couple of breaths here. Release your head and neck. And then walk your hands back so that your right elbow can contact your right knee. And be careful with this. If you have tricky knees, be really forceful against the knee with the elbow and have the knee hugging in against the elbow. I'm going to push hard. And my right heel is going to come up as my Left toes turn up. Now my right knee is way in front of my toes, which is the dangerous part. So if you're protecting a knee, you wouldn't go so low. You keep your right foot flat, and you can still lift the left toes and work the left hamstring. But if you can get down low into this kind of what I call a ninja lunge, squeeze your knee against your elbow, and then bend both elbows and sink between your hips. Work your left toes, wiggle your toes, say hi, hi toes. Take a breath. Send your hips back, breathe and stretch your belly away from your hips. And then keeping your right hand planted, right elbow against the knee, knee resisting. Float your left arm up as you inhale, turn and look up with the hand. And then float your left arm over your head. Big side body stretch on the left, windmill down to the ground. And then keeping your left toes pointed towards the front of your mat, you're going to walk your hands in that direction, left foot planted. Right toes pivot in, and then right knee down into a low lunge facing the front of your mat. Turn your left toes out again in about a 90 degree angle. So your left toes point at the front left corner of your mat, and come to the outer edge of your left foot. So I don't know if you can see in the image, but my left toes are really active to protect my ankle. 
So this type of a pigeon pose, or nuclear pigeon as it's adoringly called, is really powerful on the hip, but try not to collapse the foot of the ankle. Keep your toes super active so your lower leg is strong. That's the foundation here. Keep the foundation strong so the core can open up. Walk your hands to the right and play with the hips a little bit. Sway side to side, left to right. Easy on your knee. Be gentle on your knee. Also, keeping your toes active, your left toes active, helps protect your left knee. Roll the hips a little bit left and right. And then keeping the hips reaching to the left, walk your hands a little further right and bring your left hand to your upper inner thigh. Push the hip to the left. Open up your belly and your rib cage to the right. Release your head and neck. Turn your left shoulder up. Float your left arm up. Now your left arm is going to go up and over to the right. And here's where you have an option. You can take the hand back up and reach behind you and grab your right foot for a twisted quad stretch, or you can just stay right where you were, working this left hip. So if you have hold of the foot, try to grab the outside of your right foot with your left hand. Take your heel in close to your hip. Take your head back a little bit close to your heel. Curl your head and shoulders back into the right, and then bend your left knee a little deeper and say, good morning or good evening. Roll your head and neck, take a few deep breaths. Bend a little deeper into the left knee. And then inhale to release windmill again, down to the ground and pivot back into the wide stance. Shake your hips out. Take a moment here with the hands on fingertips or ridge tops, but grounded with your feet grounded. So before we feel that urge to be like, oh my God, what's just happening? Pull ourselves out of the pose. Take a second to feel what just happened. Take a second for the pose and the sequence of poses you just did to resonate. Opening the hips is not always easy. It's not always comfortable, especially at times of intense challenge. So take your time, breathe. So swaying the hips a little bit just to shake things out, then bend into the left knee, we're gonna go to the other side. Stretch your right leg long and steady, so push into your right foot. Send your hips to the left, walk your hands to the right. And now you can see Arc through the left side. Push with the right fingertips. And reach with your left hand up and over to the right. And breathe in your left hip, left side. Take an extra breath. Walk your hands back to center. Take your elbow against your inner knee. Again, protect your knee at all costs. So if you have a tricky knee on this side, or just in general, this pose is not worth it. So just be gentle on your knee. Squeeze the knee in. If you're down here, push the elbow out so there's some leverage protecting your knee. Squeezing the knee in, pushing the elbow out, gives your inner thighs some power to help protect the knee. Bend the elbows and sink towards the ground with your chest. Really work your right toe strong. This should be kind of an intense right inner thigh, right hamstring stretch. Breathe into there and then start to lift up. Keeping your left hand on the ground and left elbow against the left knee. Open up the right arm up. Reach up, look up, and then windmill it over your head. And then down to the ground. And now you're going to pivot towards the back of the mat. Left toes turn in. Right toes turn out. Come to the outer edge of your right foot. So now you see it from the other angle. I hope this is helpful. Keep your right toes active. Your front foot now is the opposite foot. Send your right knee and hip to the right. Or actually, first play. Move around a little bit, sway the hips side to side, and then pushing your hips to the right, walk your hands to the left, and take your right hand to your inner thigh. I push my hip out, I even lean my hip out, and I arc my torso over to the left. Roll my head and neck around a little bit, start to turn my right shoulder up, reach my right arm up, big open expansiveness. From the groundedness of the hips, so toes active, knees active, hips strong and open, I have the freedom to rise up out of it. And then I windmill over my head to the left and either stay there just kind of working the stretch and opening the side or reach back behind you with your right hand and hold your left foot. So you gotta bend your left knee, take hold of the foot and curl back and breathe. Hip back towards the heel, head and shoulders back to the left and then bend deeper into your right knee. Release the hand, 
Windmill back up and over into the wide stance and shake your hips out. Take a breath here. Sway the hips a little bit side to side. Step your feet in so they're a little wider than shoulder distance. Bend your knees deep, take your hands up to your knees, and come halfway up and recover. Take a breath. Recover your breath, recover your hips, recover the strength in your legs and even in your arms as you're pushing against your knees. Resettle yourself now that you've gotten some space, especially in your hips. Feel your neck, feel your shoulders, feel the quality of your breath. Take a moment to pause and let the poses resonate. Slowly make your way to the front of your mat. Take a second just to shake things out. To sway a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Shake your hands and fingers, wrists, ankles. Balance on your right foot yet again. Hook your left knee. So take your left foot off the ground. Hook your left knee. Use a wall to balance if you need it. And then five times. Keeping your left knee up like this, we're going to reach our left toes to the ground. So you're going to bend your right knee and get your left toes to the ground. Little mini squats. Five times. Five of them. So I'm not actually moving my toes to the ground. I'm bending my right knee to get those little taps. Good. After five, I'm going to keep my hips back, my right knee bent, and I'm going to cross my left leg over my right. And you can wrap all the way around if it's feasible, or just use your left toes like a kickstand, which is what I'm going to do. Either variation, sit low on the bend of your right knee, take your arms up, float them for a second on your breath, and then wrap your left arm underneath your right arm, and do your best to take hold of your right thumb. Take your elbows up, and as they come down, bend your knees a little deeper. Three times. Elbows up, push your elbows apart, push your knees apart, sit lower as the elbows come back down. Take your elbows up one more time, hold them up, and roll your head and neck. Sit low, bend your knees deep. Push your knees apart, push your elbows apart. Keep the head and neck opening against the resistance of the arms and that they're, they're binding here. And then take the elbows up and curl up and back. Rise with your belly and your ribs. And then gently release and unravel yourself. Shake as needed. Then balance on your left and hook your right. Bend your left knee just a little to ground yourself in your hands, even though you're on one foot. So part of this grounding practice, part of the idea of reconnecting with Dharma in a physical way is also kind of challenging yourself. Challenge yourself to, to hold your balance in odd positions and odd times of the day. Five times, tap your toes to the ground. After five, Holding your left knee bent, you're going to cross your right leg over your left, right knee over the left knee. And you can fully wrap with the right toes reaching around the calf, or use your right toes like a kickstand, your choice. Float the arms on the breath. Really try to hold them there, up and wide, and then wrap, right arm underneath the left. Hold your left thumb, take the elbows up high, push the elbows apart, push the knees apart, and the elbows come down, bend your knees a little deeper. And again, elbows up. Push the knees and elbows apart, and then squat lower as you come back down. One more time, take the elbows up, hold them there, roll your head and neck. As you push the elbows apart, as you bend the knees and push the knees apart, so you work the boundary. As you bind yourself and you make balancing more challenging, you find your center and you find what grounds you again. Now curl up and back, stretch your belly long. Do a little back bend if you can, if it's comfortable. Use the breath to hold yourself there, and then gently rise and release. Take a moment to settle. Take a moment to reground yourself, to reestablish the foundation. If you're steady on your mat with both feet planted, close your eyes for a couple of beats. Closed, sway the hips a little. Breathe so the shoulders float in their sockets. Breathe so that your head comes centered over your shoulders. Good. 
And then if you have access to a clean wall that you can sit on, we'll find it now. So I'm going to sit right here against the wall where my feet are about a f like two feet away from the wall and my sacrum is against the wall. And then I'm going to put my head back against the wall just to ground myself here and take a couple of deep breaths. As I breathe now, I'm going to move my arms up and then take them down a few times. And you can do this without the wall. If you don't have a clean wall to sit against with your head and your sacrum, put your sacrum against the wall if possible. And you can just move the shoulders with your breath. I know our spaces have to be flexible more than ever these days. So about four or five times with my inhalation and exhalation, I'm taking my arms up as I inhale, opening up my chin and chest, lifting my ribcage, and then as, my, as I exhale, I'm taking them back down. Now, wherever you are at the wall, even if you have a half wall like I have here with the window, put your hands on your knees and push your hips against the wall. You can even use the side of a chair or a sofa as long as it's pretty sturdy or a side of a, uh, a cabinet if it's pretty sturdy. Even your fridge might work for this. Breathe, rooting your hips against the wall. And then slow motion, take your hips off the wall, hinge low, and plant your hands. Really steady your hands. We're gonna go upside down here, so bear with me. If you've never been upside down, give it a try. This is a pretty safe way to do it, as long as your hands are steady. Lift your heels, lean into your hands, really steady your hands, and then take one foot up the wall, Followed by the other if you can. And if you can't, you can just try one foot and lifting your hips as high as you can, or the other foot lifting your hips as high as you can. If you're up there, bend your knees, lift your hips as high as you can. Take a breath, even roll the shoulders a little bit, roll the head and neck. Stretch your arms long, keep your hands steady. And when you're ready, nothing to prove here. Come down nice and slow and easy, and make your way into a kneeling position and get off your hands quickly. Take a moment to breathe in whatever position is comfortable as long as your hands aren't weight bearing anymore. Feel the pose move through your chest, through your neck, from your head down through your body. And the purpose here of flipping upside down is to feel the value of literally getting everything turned upside down. Which for me feels pertinent. How do we navigate it? How does it resonate? How can we kind of sit with it, even though it may be uncomfortable? I recommend it at least once a day. All right, from all fours. So if you moved your mat, you may want to cushion for your knee here. I'm going to move back on my mat, but keep my feet against the wall. So feet against the wall, all fours. I'm going to crawl my right toes up the wall with my knee on the ground. My toes are flexed against the wall, like I'm in a starting block position. So if you can see, I'll move to the side a little bit. You can see my toes are flexed, not pointed. Okay, so flex toes gives me power to stay connected to my foot and my ankle and my shin. That's also going to protect my knee. So if you've got sensitive knees, you can fold your mat in half or use a towel or a pillow. Make sure your knee is relatively comfortable because this pose is not. Swing your left foot forward. Push your hips back towards the wall, then walk your hands to the right. Similar to what we did in the nuclear pigeon, we're going to stretch that left side. So push on your left inner thigh with your left hand. Stretch your body and your torso to the right. Just open up the left side. Turn your left shoulder up. Turn your gaze up. Float your left arm up. And then windmill it over your head to the right. And then down to the ground. Big swing. And then walk your hands back to center and come upright. So push your right hip back towards the wall with your right toes active. Push your left knee out against your left hand. So give yourself a little bit of leverage. That helps your left hip. And then take your right hand up behind your head and lean back a little. Lift your chin, lift your chest. With your right elbow, swing up and over to the left. So not only are you stretching your right quad, but you're also opening up the hip and the belly, and the ribcage, even up into the shoulder as we arc to the left. Breathe. Come back to center. Float both arms up. Reach up high like you're holding onto a bar. Pull yourself up 
away from the groundedness of your hips and your right knee, and then gently release. Plant your hands, shake it out, take a couple of breaths. Sway a little bit side to side. Roll the head. And then switch sides. So left toes up the wall, same deal. Toes flexed, not pointed. Right foot forward. Plant your right foot maybe a little wider, just to give you some movement in the hips, and then walk your hands to the left, and push on your right thigh with your right hand. Sink your right hip out, arc your torso to the left, turn your right shoulder up. Breathe into this kind of low right belly, low right hip. Float the right arm up. And then reach over your head to the left and arc, windmill down slow. Walk your hands back to center and take your hands up. Left, uh, sorry, right hand to your knee, left hand to your hip as you come up right. And you may need to scoot your knee. It's not supposed to be excruciating. It's supposed to be hard and kind of a pretty intense left quad stretch, but it shouldn't hurt. So be mindful. If it hurts, move, move in a direction, move yourself out of the pose enough to get out of pain. I never want any of my students or anyone that's in my classes to be in pain, but I want you to feel what you're working. And I want your toes to remain active so you're grounded in your foundation. Left hand behind your head, right knee pushes out against your hand, arc up and over to the right. Open up the left side. Relax your jaw. Lean your head back against your hands. Open up the whole left side, left rib cage, left hip. And back to center with your torso. Stretch both arms up high. Like you're holding onto a bar, pull yourself up. And then gently release. Walk away from the wall a little bit. Sit your knees wide. Sit your hips back over your heels and come to child's pose for a breath. Or five. <laughs> so settle your head down, sit back over your heels, take a moment to really breathe and kind of reconnect. Feel what you've worked. The practice, being that it's evening time, it's a beautiful sunset here in Denver, Colorado. Um, and these days have been so beautiful. That's, being that it's evening time, it's a time to kind of settle your energy down, to kind of turn inside, to reground yourself and to kind of reset yourself. So take as much time as you need in child's pose. And then slowly lift your hips up off your heels, plant your hands steady like we did at the very beginning of class, curl your toes under, lift your knees up high, and do a little leg pedal, a little hip sway. A little shoulder rock. Whatever suits you in this dog pose to reconnect with what feels good in your body, what your body needs. Roll the head and neck if it helps. Open and close your mouth to shake out the jaw. Just take a few deep breaths. Then step your feet a little wider, like as wide, at least as wide as your hands. Take your knees to hover over the rim and steady your arms. Take your hands a little wider. Then, almost so your fingertips are off the outer edges of the mat. Knees down low, keeping the arms steady and straight. You're going to turn your knees to the right and come down to your left hip, trying to keep your arms straight the whole time. Open up the right knee, come onto the right fingertips, and then start to breathe. With your left hip anchored, pull your heart forward towards the front of your mat. And then as you exhale, turn your chest, the center of your chest, to the left against the resistance of your left hip. With each inhalation, lift your heart up and forward towards the middle of your mat, towards the front of your mat. With each exhalation, turn your whole rib cage in resistance to your left hip to the left. And you should unravel, feel this kind of big side body stretch through the left side. Breathe and open your belly wide. Lean into your right hand, curl the toes, lift the knees, come back to center and sway the hips, kind of shake things out, left and right. Re-steady the hands, take the knees to hover, keeping the arms as straight as you can, turn your knees to the left now, come down to the right hip. Come up to your left fingertips, reach your heart forward as you inhale, turn your rib cage to the right as you exhale. With each inhalation, reach your heart forward and up, and then turn your ribcage to the right as you exhale. 
resisting your right hip, it's grounded. My left knee's up, just to give myself a little leverage to the hips. One more time, big deep breath in, reach your heart forward, and then turn the center of your chest and rib cage to the right. It's not a big movement, but you should feel this kind of side body opening, side body stretching to the right rib cage. From here, you're gonna lie on your right side, slide your right arm out in front of you, take your head to your bicep, and just take a moment to breathe. And then make your way onto your back. Take your arms into a cactus pose, bend your knees and plant your feet flat on the mat nice and wide. Take a moment here to breathe and just be held by the ground and the mat to allow the shoulders to softly open and the chest to softly open. I don't know about you, but sometimes this is the hardest thing for me to do to hold myself with, in this kind of vulnerable position with my arms open like this for an extended period of time where what my body wants to do is kind of curl up into a ball when I'm on the ground. But with the arms open like this and just letting the fascia around the heart and the lungs and the ribs softly open and passively open is so important for me. I'm going to slowly start to sway my knees left and right. So a windshield wiper the knees left and right, just kind of rocking the hips, rocking the knees. Feet can go wide as the knees tilt side to side. And then the next time the knees point to the right, I'm going to keep them there, drop the knees to the right, and then take my right foot softly on top of my left knee and slide my left arm straight up along my ear so my left side is growing long. So left side long. Left, both knees point to the right. Right foot is on top of the left knee. And it's just more of a passive, grounded stretch through the left side. I have to keep my left toes active to keep my knee, my left knee protected. Just breathe into my left side. Next inhalation, gently come back to center, bend the left elbow, replant the right foot, re-steady the arms and cactus, allow the heart to be open and grounded with the shoulder blades in contact with the ground below you and the earth. Allow the heart to kind of freely open with each breath. Sway the knees and the hips as you rock the knees side to side and windshield wiper the knees. And then the next time the knees point to the left, keep them there. Take the left foot on top of the right knee and slide the right arm long over your head alongside your ear. Throw it open, push your head gently into the mat. Keep your right toes active, both sets of toes active to protect the knees as you open the hips. And breathe. Inhalation, softly come back to center. Reground yourself between your sacrum and your shoulder blades and the back of your head. And then lift your knees, but keep your arms straight as you hold the knees. So with the legs and the weight of the legs kind of pushing away from you initially, knees open wide, rock on your hips. So let the arms hang straight. Let the fingers softly wrap around the upper shins, the, the bottoms of the knees, and just rock side to side to softly massage your low back and sacrum. We'll bring this in tighter in a second, but just keep the breath and the belly open, the low back softly curved as you rock on sacrum in the lowest part of your spine. Now you can kind of pause the rock and bring it in a little closer and around and do a little softer rock on the hips. Bend your elbows to pull your knees in a little closer, but try to keep your head grounded here as you rock on your low back and your sacrum. When you're ready, pausing the rock, softly release your feet to the ground. Slide your legs straight out below you and float your arms over your head. Take a few breaths here, really opening up softly with your breath, getting nice and long, feeling the opening of your body. 
sway the hips, kind of get the side bodies to settle down. And then when you're ready, place your hands wherever you want to allow yourself to kind of reground after the practice. So this is Shavasana time. I want you to feel steady and grounded. I want your breath to be super full and fluid, but also soft and balanced. And I'm gonna play the bowl a little bit here in just a minute, so don't be surprised when you hear it. But for the next 10 to 20 breaths, next two to four minutes, just settle and quiet down. yourself to your foundation, not just your physical foundation, but what you know to be true about you. Take your time. Move your body slowly. Even for the rest of the day, if you can be more conscientious about the subtleties of the movements while you're eating your dinner or preparing for bed, wherever you are in the world. 
slowly bring yourself out of Shavasana if you're still with me. Pause for a moment in a seated position, taking your time to set yourself up with a steady foundation of your hips, your toes, your ankles, however it feels right to sit. And then breathe, just last couple of deep breaths, few deep breaths with our time together. Thank you guys. I went a little longer than expected. Thanks for everybody that stuck around. Hope that helped. Hope to see you again and reconnect with you again. Again, my name is Roger. I'm from Denver, Colorado. And I hope you all are staying safe and being well and continuing to move. Lots of love, you guys.